Hey, good morning. Welcome to Odessa Rose Creates. Good morning, good morning. Hello. Donna says she's watching. Say hello, hello. I'm trying to get my show button to come on here. There we go. All right. Today, well, let me introduce myself. I'm Robin Schmidt with Odessa Rose Creates, and I'm here to share with you my love and passion for the hobby of chalking which is done with uh, Chalk Couture's reusable silk screen transfers, our chalk paste and inks. Today we're gonna to work with chalk paste on a little kit that you can purchase on my website. Adorable, I think it's perfect for a cute little Mother's Day gift. Maybe uh, you wanna to give to friends or to your own daughters that are moms, um, things like that. So I'm gonna show you that on my website there's also a link to the website in the description above, or hopefully you'll see it here on the news feed that pops up. But let me show it to you on my iPad, how you can shop for our little kits. So if you go to our, um, whether you use the um, handhelds, iPads, or, or your computer, the home screens look a little bit different, but you wanna to go to the menu item, menu, which could be the little three lines on your cell phone or uh, across here, you're gonna see the menu and you wanna click on shop and then you wanna click on kits and you're gonna to get to this right here. Let me, I always uh, have too much light. So you're gonna see an assortment of kits and today we're gonna to get this one it's 19.38 in US dollars. And it comes with this board and base. We call this a board and base. This transfer and two paste colors. So this is a board and base. It comes packaged like this. Okay. You're gonna get this transfer in this particular kit. It says, this house was clean yesterday. Sorry you missed it. That's the transfer that we're gonna use. You get two paste packets, and you're gonna get white and couture teal. Now, this is enough paste to make several of these. So what you wanna do, if you wanna make some as gifts, then come up to shop and go to surfaces. And hey, by the way, our star cutouts are available just today, just a few minutes ago they became available. So if you're wanting the star cutouts, let me see if I can get it to show. I can't really get it to show. It, they're wooden star cutouts, three different sizes, and we have a transfer that goes with that. But if you scroll down, you're gonna see the board and base and add that to your cart. And then you can make several of these reusing your transfer. So grab some board and bases and grab that kit. You go back to kits, and it's this one right here, and you're gonna get that transfer and some paste packets and a little mini squeegee. So if you've never even chalked before, you're gonna have everything you need to complete this. And like I said, grab some more board and bases, and you can make some for gifts for other friends and other moms, because we're gonna kind of give it a mom theme for Mother's Day. Um, so once we chalk on our design, we're gonna make a little tag to tie on to the bottom of it down here. Whoops. And I'll show you that part later. We're gonna chalk first. So open up your board and base. I'm gonna use this one that I already have opened. This has the darker stain. These are the old style, previous style, I should say. The newer ones come with our lighter brown stain, which is really trendy now and really pretty. So these come out, they just set in the base. That's why it's called board and base. And they actually can go with other designs. And they actually can um, create on both sides. So maybe you want to do a holiday one on this side. I happen to have my French fry one on this side. But we're going to change it over and do this side here. So we're just gonna lay it down here. We're gonna work with a little bit of scrapbook paper, probably this one, when we're done. Oh, I'll show you that, it's gonna be part of the tag. 
So let's see who's watching, who's gonna get ready to chalk today. <laughs> let's see. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Talisa. I hope I say that right. Good morning, good morning. Okay, so some basic kits that you could buy for around $20. Some are slightly over 20, some are actually under 20, but there's several choices of kits that you can um, purchase for, for creating. And like I said, add, add some extra bonus surfaces because you can create, once you have your paste open, you wanna use it up, those little packets. So get some more, um, what do I wanna say, surfaces, so you can create them again. Now, if you're gonna, do several of them right in a row. Um, you can maybe get, maybe I would say transfer this a couple times and then wash it and make sure it's really dry and then do it again. You don't want to like keep using it and using it because eventually, especially on this type of a fine print, you're going to lose your crisp print from the transfer of the silk screen starting to get plugged up with chalk paste. So you may need to wash that a few times if you're gonna do several of them. And of course, wash it when you're done because it is reusable. Now, keep in mind also that this bottom sets down into the base, so you lose a little bit of space. As you can see, the black bottom kind of disappears, right? So make sure your transfer is set up a little bit higher so you don't have it anything set too, too far down. Especially, I'm gonna set it up higher because I'm gonna put some ribbon and a tag down here. So I wanna make sure you can read my whole design. So I actually may even raise it up a little bit higher so I can allow for the spacing of my ribbon to go around the base. So I'm gonna bring it up a little bit higher so we don't lose those words once we get the ribbon on there. So this is just like a sticker, so you can peel it up and reposition. And I'm gonna set it up that high. Okay, so I have it over. And that way, when I set it down in here, I think I'll have plenty of room for some uh, string or ribbon to run across here without losing my words, getting lost behind the ribbon. So I'm gonna raise my transfer up a little bit high. Okay, so you're gonna get white and teal in your kit. I'm gonna just use my jars of white and teal so I don't have to open the paste packets. That way I can give them to somebody else who might need them. So I'm gonna use my white and teal, but otherwise you would just snip off the top of it and just push it out onto a little plate so you can um, get your squeegee to it. I haven't used this couture tea over very much, so I'm gonna put a little water in mine. My landscape, well, the, my, the guys that are here are putting a fresh mulch down around our landscaping, and they are right outside my window, which is wide open. The curtain is wide open. And yeah, they, they were like looking at me, probably looking, oh my God, what is she doing? I'm like, hurry up, <laughs> hurry up and leave. Oh, but yeah, that could be, that's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> oh gosh. Mm. Okay, so I got my teal ready and uh, let's get the white going. <laughs> I'm going to use both colors. I'm going to do um, the smaller print in teal and the word clean in white I believe no other way around I think I do the small ones in white and this in teal because I think the white shows up best so I want the smaller words to be in white so I'm gonna take my little mini squeegee that they give you and I'm gonna do the white in all the words except for clean and you just apply some paste to your squeegee and then spread it around your transfer where you want it. Make sure you cover up all the silkscreen areas. 
can do the up on top here. And then you want to take off your extra pace. So you basically skim it down with your squeegee. So you're just going to take it and just pull off all that extra like that. And then what's extra you put back in on your little plate. In my case, it's the jar. Then you want to wash this off because you only have one squeegee. If you just bought the kit and you've never chalked before, wash that off real quick. Just use a Clorox wipe and then apply your, and, and be kind of quick about it because you don't want your paste drying on your silk screen. And then apply your teal on top of clean. So I've applied it on there. I'm just skimming off the extra. And sometimes you'll have like squeegee lines from the edges of your squeegee. So try to get rid of your squeegee lines too, because they will show up on your print. Okay, so make sure it's nice and smooth. Then you're just gonna peel this down. There. Now I see I have some over here. That's okay, we're gonna take a Clorox wipe and wipe that off. I did forget to tell you about, and I should you, you saw how hard that was to pull off that transfer. That's because I didn't put any fuzz on the back of this. And by fuzzing, we mean, you know, get yourself a terry cloth towel, lay it flat on your table. This is before you chalk. And you're gonna press that down and lift it up a couple times to put a little fuzz on the back. That way it won't be so sticky and so hard to pull off. I mean, I had used this before and it wasn't as sticky as a brand new one. But if you have a brand new one, make sure you put a little fuzz on the back. That way, if it does pull off super hard and you're pulling it, you could be stretching it out. And don't, and if it really is hard to pull, don't pull from the corner. Because you see it has a, a stretch in the bias. So if you pull from the corner, you really could stretch out your transfer and then it won't lay flat the next time you want to print. So always pull straight down or straight across so you're not pulling on the bias and um, stretching out your transfer, especially if it's, you know, get, it's, if it's kind of hard to come off, okay? So there it is. Um, and I think if you're gonna do it again, you probably wanna wash this. And I'm gonna show you how to wash it real quick. Now, the best thing to do is to go to your sink, turn on your water, you don't wanna use too hot, but I use warm and just hold it on there and start kind of brushing off the paste under the faucet. And then if you really want to get something super easy, you buy our board erasers and they are found uh, under accessories or tools. They come two in a package like this. You get two of them and those work really great for getting chalk paste off of boards because you can wash all this off after it dries and transfers. So make sure it gets wet. You can use your board eraser or even just use your hand and get all the paste off. Since I'm not going to the sink, I'm just gonna clean it right here. And if you lay it on a wet surface, that'll help it sticking. Okay, then just spray it or hold it under the faucet and then just, it helps if this is wet but just wipe it off or use a Clorox wipe or a Lysol wipe. Those work great too. And just wipe it off. If you don't have a board eraser, you can definitely use a Clorox wipe. So you wipe all the paste off. Pick it up, lay it sticky side up now, and do the same thing. Wipe it again. And that way you'll get any paste that may have traveled to the back side. And you can get that off also. Okay, so we have sticky side up, we're cleaning the back. Then I usually flip it over again and do it one more time on the front. Then you want to make sure this is dry before you chalk again, if you're gonna chalk it again. Otherwise it's clean, let it air dry. Once it's done air drying, then you wanna apply it back to your sticker or your uh, backer 
And you see how there's a shiny side and a dull side? The shiny side is for the sticker, okay? So once this dries, we'll, we'll pretend that it's dry now. Take the shiny side to the sticky side. I have it laying face down. This is the easiest way to put your backers back on your transfers. Lay them sticky side up. Take your shiny side, apply it to the sticky side. So just line up. I usually start in the corner and line it across. And then you can just stick it back on. Okay, so now it's back on. It's the easiest way to get it on. Then put it back in your package for storage. That way it won't get damaged. You don't have a chance of it getting rolled up and getting something sticking to it. So put it back in the package when you're done using it, okay? So that's how you use them. Now let's go back to our board and you can see I got a little bit of chalk paste here on the edge. So again, take a Clorox wipe and just wipe it off. Now, if you had a bleed through or something that, that got super close to your print, you wanna make sure your print is dry before, before you try to get in there and try to get it, it off. Make sure this is dry first, it's gonna be much easier. Then you could either take, I like using a wet pointed tip Q-tip. Just, I usually just wet it with my spit. You don't want it too wet. We also have our detail tool. The little cap comes off. It's got this little point. And if you had a little bleed through, you can just kind of almost scratch it off, especially on our boutique boards and uh, other really smooth surfaces. So that's how you would clean up any mistakes. So if it's far away from what you just printed, you can pretty much wipe it off right away. If it's super close or attached to what you just printed, make sure you dry this first or allow it to dry. Then you can get in with a wet Q-tip or uh, use our detail tool and just kind of scratch it off with this or take the wet Q-tip and keep, uh, keep at it and you'll get it off. But otherwise I had a clean print. It looks great as it is. I don't need to do any mistakes other than what was over here. So if you have a heat tool, this is also from Chocotour. This will dry it quicker if you're in a hurry. Or you can just set it off to the side and it will dry. But I'm gonna give it a little drying, so I'm going to add some, um, a little tag and a little ribbon around the bottom. And just so I don't bump up against this when it's wet, I'm gonna go ahead and dry it. So this is a, a little bit of a heat blower. Not so hot that you're really gonna burn yourself compared to my embossing tool um, gun, which is very hot. So this is a nice heat, and uh, it's not gonna melt your transfers, or anything like that if you get too close. So we have that done. We're gonna set it in our base, and now we're gonna work on a little tag to attach here, and, and uh, we're gonna put hashtag mom life on our tag. So it says, this house was clean yesterday, sorry you missed it, and then we'll have hashtag mom life okay so i have this little wooden tag i got this at the craft store you could even just use um, a card stock um, paper if you wanted to you don't even have to use really a wooden one just cut it out the shape of a tag but i'm going to apply a little bit of scrapbook paper to add some color and pattern as you can see kind of has that teal in the background so we're gonna just cut out a piece of this. And I'm just going to grab my paper cutter. I kind of like this one corner of it. It has kind of a darker area a little bit, a little bit more teal in that area. So I'm gonna cut this area out for my tag. But I'm gonna trim this um, piece off right here, which is like the price tag and the information. So I'm gonna cut that off, paper cutter. And I'm just going to flip this over and trace it and cut it out. And then I'm gonna Mod Podge it to my tag. So I'm taking off the string. I'm just gonna lay this on the back right here and just trace it with a pencil and cut it out. 
and then we're just going to Mod Podge it. Even if you don't have Mod Podge, you could probably use, uh, add a little bit of water to some Elmer's glue or something like that. If you don't have Mod Podge. You could actually just do it on the wood too, but I kind of want a little bit of color and pattern with this. So I just traced that. And now I'm going to cut it out. Off. I'm going to attach that to here and I'll even poke the hole in because we're going to restring it and then I'm going to put a hashtag mom life and I'm just going to write it on there. I think it'd just be easier. You can try to find a transfer with some letters, but I think I'm just gonna write it and make it easy. I'm trying a similar font to what we have on here, but just smaller. So take some Mod Podge. I'd really like to do this on a piece of cardboard because I'll probably get Mod Podge on my pad here. Easier to throw this stuff away than having to clean up my surface here. Usually I apply it to the paper, so I don't know why I'm applying it to the wood, but I guess it doesn't matter too much. Okay. I'm just gonna lay that on top. Press it down. Nice and secure. Let me give that a second to dry, and uh, we'll see who's who's watching today. Say hi, Anne Marie. I like that transfer. Yeah, it's a good one, right? Hello and good morning, Beth. Good morning, Mary Carol. Hello, Nancy. Hello, Carleen. Good morning, good morning, guys. Okay, so we have it stuck on there. And I'm just making sure it's nice and stuck. Now, if you have a little paper over the edge, which is probably gonna happen, take your little fine grit sandpaper and just sand it down. Which I think kind of makes it look cool anyway, kind of really makes it vintage if you want a vintage look otherwise I think I am going to put a little bit of a distressed ink around it too just trying to sand the corners of the paper it makes the paper look like it's not just glued on there and laying there it kind of allows it to blend into the wood when you sand it if that makes sense like let me get across the top here it almost looks like it's painted on um, like, I don't know if you can see the corners very well, but it just kind of makes it all one piece versus looking like a piece of paper just stuck on the top. Just kind of blends it all in. If that makes sense. Um, now we need to address this hole. 
I'll probably take my detool, detail tool and try to poke that through without uh, tearing off the paper. Okay, so that worked out well. Just got the hole in there. You could even um, make a little brown circle with a marker to make it look like the um, that little brown circle on a tag on a on a uh, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know what they call that. It kind of keeps the tag from tearing. I'm gonna grab a brown marker and show you what I mean. Just a brown sharpie. Hopefully this one works. Yeah, it does. So even if you take the brown sharpie and just make a circle around your tag hole. And it gives it the look of a tag, right? That's just with Sharpie. And we're also gonna put uh, hashtag mom. And I think I'm gonna use my really fine tip Sharpie. And I'm just gonna write hashtag mom life. So, and I kinda wanna make the font a simple handwritten font. And I'm no, uh, great at printing, but I'm going to try. Only going uphill slightly. <laughs> Hashtag mom life, right? So let's just take some jute, a little bit of ribbon, and we'll finish this up. I think it's gonna look cute. Tying that on there, like right in here. Hashtag mom life, right? Okay. So I'm going to take some light colored jute that I have and um, I'm going to tie it around here and probably just make a knot and then we'll make a string this back on and make a little bow on it and be done. Hang that on there. So I'm going to tie it over here to this side. So just have it in a knot. Now I'm gonna put the string back on my tag that came with it. And maybe we'll do a little bit of a bow. I grabbed a couple little ribbons to make a teeny bow on it. And you know what? I just had an idea. You know how you loop it through? like that. I'm going to take that off and I'm going to set my bow on it and then do that little loop. So I'm going to leave it like this for now. It's just stuck through there. I'm going to take a couple little bits of ribbon here. I have this cute little pom-pom ribbon. This I remember I got at Target during like Valentine season last year. But I want just a little snippet of it. Just gonna do a little, little uh, what do we call a messy bow on it, and then I have some aqua teal colored uh, polka dot here, and I think I want to do messy bow with this too. Let's see. 
So, have you ever seen messy bow? You just cross your ribbons. And I'm gonna alternate the two. No, I'm gonna do it like this. Lay down my two green ones and then the pom-pom ones. And then take a piece of your jute. I'm gonna think this through. I'm gonna tie it. This is really thick, so I'm gonna like um, separate this and use the strands to th make a thinner rope. Or string, okay. There's one third of it. And I'm gonna go ahead and separate out. There's three of them. I'm gonna separate them out so I have thinner strings. I'm gonna put one across the top of my X. There's my little X's of ribbons and I'm laying this string across the top. I'm gonna flip it over and knot it in the back. That way I'll have a, a bow. Before I tie it tight, I'm gonna add some strands of this on top of my X. I'm gonna make it have some of this frizz dot ribbon on the top of my bow, which I should have done before I started to tie it. That's okay. I got three little strands of it, and I'm gonna lay them across the pom-pom ribbon. And then I'm gonna go back to laying that um, first string across the top. So I have the teal, I have the pink, and then I have the frayed jute. And I'm gonna cinch, I got the top string over it, and I'm gonna pull it tight. And this is gonna make my little crazy little bow, messy bow they call them. So before you pull it too tight and knot it, Make sure your position of your ribbons are where you want them. As far as uh, length on the left side, length on the right side. So get them positioned. Okay, and I have a tie, one, one loop tie on the back. So now I'm gonna knot it. Oh, my ribbon, <laughs> my rib or tie just broke. Okay, so there. Now I'm going to um, take this and put it through the hole. And I think I'm gonna need a little guide wire. If you've never seen my little needles I use to uh, put a string through a hole, it's just a florist wire. Let's see if you can see it. Fold it in half. So I lay the string in there, like that, makes a needle. And then you put this through the hole and it'll take your string through your little hole just like a needle so i'm pushing it let me see you see it it's going through the hole like a needle and thread and there it comes out so now i got that on there and remember i talked about looping my um string of my let me find it it is the loop string so I got that loop and then the strings and I'm gonna loop it on top so the ends of my string tag the tag of my string is gonna go through the loop hope you can see that well I'm gonna pull it through on top of my bow I just made Let's see if that works I gotta lay everything down here. Pull it up tight. There we go. Now I got my strings of my tag and the string from my bow, and I'm gonna knot them. And there's the garden guys out there again. I hope they don't look in here. I'm going to knot it all together on the back so that everything stays in place. OK. 
Okay, so now I have my cute little tag with my cute little bow on it. I'm going to tie these strings to this string down here on my board. So I'm going to take it out. I'm going to loop half the strings through one side of this ribbon here, or this jute on my board. And I'm going to attach it by knotting it onto my jute, just like that. Just put it in a knot. Okay. Then these strings here, I'm going to shorten them up a little bit. And I'm going to fray them out just like the fraying of on the ribbon. So I'm going to untwist the twine and separate out the fibers, strings of the um, jute and make it kind of fuzzy and fluffy. Just string them out. Okay, so you have more fuzzy. Set this back in here. And then we have a cute little sign. So it's when it sits, it'll set like this. Make sure you can see our words. This house was clean yesterday. Sorry you missed it. Hashtag mom life. You see it? Pretty cute. So when it sits, it'll sit like that. And you should be able to read it. If those are get too long and you, over the words, you can always trim them down a little bit. Give them a little bit of a haircut. So that's our little uh, Mother's Day gift you can get. Buy this kit, it's under kits. Buy some extra board and bases because you're gonna have enough paste in your kit and you're gonna have your, your transfer to reuse so you can make several of them for maybe your daughters, friends um, that are moms and are busy. And you know, you could even make this tag out of the paper, but I think it's cuter on the wood. It gives a little bit more, uh, structure to it and uh, cute and you can use any paper you can make each of them different if you have different scrapbook paper just make sure it's light enough that you can write on it and the words are going to show up so yeah okay fun fun i'm going to see uh, if we have any questions i think it's pr it's a pretty easy project I like the Transfer on your shelf, cockadoodle. I made that up. I made that transfer. Um, this was totally my design, so I had to use lots of different transfers to create it. Um, the the animals came from Farm Charm um, transfer, and then the letters are from all different transfers that I used to spell out oink moo cockadoodle so that's, that is um, one I made up. It would be a cute transfer for them to make. Something similar. Okay, so Linda, that's who's asking me about that. That, I, I made that design using different transfers. Okay, I think, I think that's it, guys. I don't see any more questions. Right? one in there real quick if you have one while I put this back looking for chicken you need a chicken or a rooster mm. that little that little teeny chicken he's only about that big he comes on a five by seven it says um, what does it say what well, says this feels like home this little chicken here um, otherwise, there's some, there's a, I'm thinking of a chicken on a retired, but other, on a retired transfer, otherwise, there's a rooster on bed and breakfast, and, um, bed and breakfast I just used on my last live with the copper trays, um, it's a rooster, um, weather vane, but you could just use the rooster part. 
but chicken there is a chicken on another transfer but it's retired he's about this big he's a good sized chicken just plain solid um and otherwise we have roosters i think so I'm trying to think of others can't think off the top of my head but anyway um okay let me see looking for chicken yep all right all right the best thing you really if you google chocotour farm or chocotour chicken transfer you might see the images of some of them and most of them are going to probably be retired but you can look that way too or if you are a chocotour designer um, we have our in search of group that you can uh, go through and look for transfers okay all right guys that's it i am working on my design for the art contest so um that's really what my mind is on a lot so that's why i came up with just a cute little project but i think this is something that uh, everyone should be doing and they could be really cute gifts for your daughters if they're moms or yourself or your friends um just a cute little gift and check out the other kits there's some really cute ones in there and they're like i said all around 20 dollars give or take a buck or two so check them out and uh, start creating and i will talk with you later bye